Hey everyone, what's up? I hope you're all doing well and I'm sending you all great vibes if you are studying or reviewing this content with me. Thanks for being here. This video is going to cover burn classification as well as a little bit about burn intervention and the rule of nines. I tried to organize this to the best of my ability, um, so I decided to put the classifications in a chart to make it very straightforward. I wish I had done this when I studied because now that I'm looking at it, it's a lot easier to look at in an organized, you know, conceptual way. So I hope it's helpful. Before I get started, I want to preface that there are more degrees of burns. They don't end at fourth degree, but this is the most I'm going to cover. If you're interested in learning more about the later burns, go for it. I believe it goes up to sixth degree. And it just that means at that point that the burn has gotten to the bone. It just becomes more and more severe. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to start off with first degree. So a first degree burn is a superficial burn. I think of this when I'm cooking and I just have a quick flicker of pain from accidentally touching the pot when it's hot and you get minimal pain and edema and there are no blisters. It takes three to seven days to heal, so you're good to go in a week. When you get to second degree burn, this is a superficial partial thickness burn. And at this point, it is synonymous with a sunburn. So I like to think of the superficial second degree, the S in there as sun, sunburn. Both of them have S in it. I try to remember it that way. So at the second degree burn, you're going to have redness, blisters, as well as maybe a wet consistency to your burn. And this takes... 7 to 21 days to heal. So just think about your personal experiences with sunburn um, and what that's like. And that's exactly what a second degree superficial partial thickness burn would be like. Now I have a checkbox for hypotropic scar risk. So a hypotropic scar is just a fancy way of saying an elevated scar. Think of maybe a keloid scar. There are different kinds. It's a uh, very fibrous and kind of lifted from your skin. And starting from a second degree burn all the way to third degree burn, you are at risk of a hypertrophic scar. Moving on to the second part of second degree burn, it gets broken up into two parts. So once you're at this level, it's a deep partial thickness burn. So you now may exhibit symptoms of redness, whiteness, and like an elastic texture. And there may be um, some sensation deficits that may happen here and this will take 21 to 35 days to heal. I have a personal experience of this happening when I was in middle school. A Bunsen burner landed on my arm while we were cleaning up and it was still very hot from the experiment that we did and that description is so accurate. It's like you, you see the skin kind of getting stretchy and elastic and almost like lifted up and very, very, you know, red, painful. Um, and so when it healed, I ended up with a keloid scar or a hypertrophic scar. So I still have some um, remnants of that scar on my arm, but it is no longer elevated. So it healed nicely. But Try to use some associations from maybe your personal life if you know anyone or you have experienced uh, injury or burn yourself and make those connections if that's helpful in organizing these different symptoms. Moving on to a third degree burn, now we have reached full thickness. So this one is going to be white, waxy, leathery. And sensation at this point is gone, and you will need a skin graft. Um, this will take months to heal, and it is also at risk or very highly likely that you would have a hypertrophic scar. Moving on to fourth degree, last but not least, this is an electrical burn. So I put a little lightning electrical symbol here to help you remember. And... This will disrupt the nerves. This gets as far as your muscles and even possibly your bones. So this one is quite severe. So that wasn't so bad, right? This is going to be the end of classification. So if you need a break, please pause here. Okay, so moving on to some intervention 
I did not do a full review of intervention. That would be a very long video, but I just wanted to cover a few major things that I associate to burn intervention. So early on, as early as 72 hours post-operation, you want to really get the person moving. So if they can tolerate active range, great. If they can do passive range, great. Try to get them moving. Of course, we want to do more active if possible than passive, but this is by tolerance. Some resources will even say start as early as 24 hours post-operation. So this is very you know, immediate. This is something you want to focus on as soon as possible. And when the wounds are healed, you can then start sensation testing as well as strength testing for the individual. And you also want to really focus on ADL as soon as possible because this is really going to help them holistically. When you think about a patient who's had a burn, there's a lot of different things going on with their body that can decrease their self-esteem and their confidence. But focusing on ADL and functional activities is really going to give them that boost and also help them with the healing process as well as increase their range of motion. So this is a win-win. You want to start ADL as soon as possible. Of course, there is wound debridement or care. And there are two things that are important to address here. You want to make sure the dressing changes are consistent so that the wound is well managed and cleaned, as well as a sterile whirlpool to help with the debridement as well. Debridement is just a fancy way of saying cleaning. Um, the wound might have lots of, you know, debris or things in there. So it's just going to help clean it out, make sure that it is sterilized and on track to heal properly. Of course, splints, if necessary or applicable, are always helpful. And positioning, 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 positioning. I cannot say more about that. Uh, you want to place the individual in an anti-contracture position. That in itself can be an entirely separate video, so I'm not going to dive into that. I can't make any promises, but I will try to make an anti-contracture positioning video when I can. Crossing my fingers for that. <laughs> uh, another thing that we want to address for sure is edema control. And once the wound heals, you can start massaging the area of the burn because it really helps with the healing process. Scar massaging is great because it preserves range of motion, it helps with the stretching, as well as decreasing the itching or discoloration that might exist in the area, and it promotes the collagen remodeling. So this is very beneficial to the healing process. Custom garments are great to apply pressure to the scar, and that's going to help uh, decrease the excessive collagen growth, and that's what leads to scarring, so that's what it's going to prevent. But this has to be worn for at least an entire year. It's recommended 23 hours a day. So basically, you're wearing this all the time, aside from when you're you know, cleaning or bathing. Um, and that's a lot. So there is a lot of education that goes into burn treatment, intervention, care. And I think it's very important to get loved ones and family members on board as well because there's a lot of different things going on, especially from a psychological standpoint. A uh, burn injury can be very traumatic, so you really want to make sure that they feel supported and that anyone that lives with them or is close to them is on board and can really help support them in the right direction for their healing process and recovery. Alrighty, so last but not least is the quick rule of nines. It's just called the rule of nines, but it is commonly used as a quick reference to estimate the extent of someone's burns. I don't know about you, but I'm a visual learner, so I decided to draw a little figure. Hopefully this is helpful. It just breaks the body up, so starting from the head down, it's head 9%. The chest is... 36% but it's split in half so it's 18% on the front and 18% on the back. Each arm is 9% and the uh, groin area is 1% and the legs are 18% each. So that is the end of this video. Thanks for watching this and learning with me. I hope this was helpful and I hope you're all doing well. If you're studying for the exam, I know it's a long journey, but you will get through it and you will be great. So I'm rooting for all of you.
make sure to take breaks and self-care. That's important. So do it. <laughs> all right. Well, I hope you all have a great day and I will see you next time. Take care.